So now I'd like to introduce the first of my nine guests this evening. And um, the first of those is going to be uh, Louise Lucas from... Uh, and let's just there she is, Louise Lucas, CEO of the Property Education Company. Hello, Louise. How are you going? Fantastic, Terry. How are you? I'm very good. Nice to be talking to you tonight. We don't have a lot of time. It's, it's going to be a no. fast-moving program tonight. So, um, this is the biggest one, I reckon. But anyway, first up, okay. can I just say congratulations on organising this Property Summit. This is a brilliant idea, and I think it's fabulous getting all these people to give great information to people across the country. So well done to you and Katie and the hotspotting team. Okay, thanks, Louise. I'm, I'm finding it a little bit faint. I'm not sure whether... My volume needs to go up or yours, but um, um, we're going to be talking about why people need a mortgage broker now more than ever. And a lot of the excitement that's out there in um, the general public, certainly the media, about what's happening with markets and prices uh, seem to be hitting north again, particularly in the bigger cities. And a lot of the excitement is coming from media rhetoric about so-called easier finance and cheaper finance. So I thought it was a great starting point for this discussion to talk to you as a leading uh, mortgage broker. Um, the impression has been given that the upper changes mean it's a whole lot easier for people to get finance, but I think that that may be a bit of a furphy. What are you finding at the coalface of the finance industry at the moment? Oh, I'm finding it. It's uh, amazingly complex. And while APRA have given uh, guidelines and uh, sort of defined the parameters around which people should be lending and what lenders should be doing, uh, it, it doesn't tell someone who's just going to it new who will suit them best. And that is the thing that people get trapped with. So I've had a case this last week where someone was refused to loan perfectly acceptable PAYG, like as in their... Uh, employed by someone, get a pay slip, and were refused a loan and they were feeling very down about it and all miserable when the reality was, when they've come to me, I can say, well, clearly that lender would never have done that loan for these very reasons. And, and you just have to know what those are before you go there. So yeah. it's really a lot more complicated than people think. But it's also uh, not necessarily any easier to get loans approved. I mean, the, the criteria is still incredibly strict. And lenders are scrutinising each loan application with a fine tooth, tooth comb. It's still very hard to get loans up the line, isn't it? Well, uh, uh, the biggest development of recent times is uh, positive credit reporting, Terry, which is actually a bit negative for most people. And they don't seem to realise it. But lenders now have access to all of your data for any loans or outstanding credit for the last 24 months. And while they previously would have only asked for three months or six months to review statements, now they can, can't unsee anything that they've got um, automatic access to because the banks are now all sharing that information across their platforms. So, and now some of the lenders are now giving me a free access to order people's credit reports just so that we have that in front of us before we begin because they're saying, well, you better know because if people aren't telling you everything and there's things hidden there, they will or the lenders will already know and they'll just refuse the loan and people won't even know why. Okay, so and, and that's a consequence of the new regime of positive credit reporting. Cons oh, I suspect the part of the problem is things that can't be unseen are uh, mispayments, uh, particularly anything to do with uh, you know cash withdrawals out of your accounts or out of your keep redrawing on your existing home loans. You know these are sort of indicators that you're not managing your money very well. Yeah being overdrawn, online gambling is a big flag where, you know, they might not refuse you alone, but they might not want you either. And so these sort of things, they're going to, I suspect, start targeting uh, interest rates for people who are who have better managing of their credit and people who are actually struggling and probably need more help are going to be penalised for it, as they currently are anyway. But, yeah, it's a so what sort of action can people take to clean up their situation so that when it comes their turn to be scrutinised, they're presenting a, a more positive picture to a lender? Well, first up, you must get a copy of your own credit file. 
from mycreditfile.com.au. Don't go onto that silly website that gives you a score. People go, oh, my score is fabulous. I go, your score doesn't mean nothing if I can't see the full report because it, can, it can't, it changes depending on what you've actually applied for. Some people have gone online and just inquired and next thing they've had a hit on their credit file and they didn't even realise, particularly with major lenders. So watch that. If you ask them, they might automatically hit your file. Today I had a client, I, ha I had them present their file to us prior to submitting and we found a, a loan for a flute that they'd forgotten about, which is not unreasonable. It's sort of they'd got a loan for their child's flute. Oh, no, we've paid that out, but it's still sitting there on a credit file. So we need to be able to explain that. So when you're going for it, get your credit file, your own credit file first. The other thing lenders are looking for are the number of hits in a very short time. So they don't want many hits in the, next, in the last 12 months. So don't go shopping for loans at multiple lenders and then going, oh, now I'm ready, now I know what I want. That would be a really stupid behaviour. What constitutes a hit? You were going to ask a question, sorry. <laughs> sorry, what constitutes a hit on their file? Oh, so, someone inquiring. Just, just an inquiry. It might not be an open credit. And then you go and apply somewhere else and you can end up with a, an automatically declined loan because which you cannot dispute with some lenders because you've just had too many, you know, um, inquiries on your file. So be very wary of that. So quite apart from the, that sort of positive reporting regime and the, the changes that were announced by APRA back in May, I think ASIC has come to light just in the last week or so publishing just lending week, guidelines. Is that adding a, an extra layer of complexity to a... Oh, that is hilarious. Have a good read of RG209, people. <laughs> it's <laughs> easily downloadable, but by God, it won't help you. <laughs> and I look at it and they're giving examples of, of, of times where people have struggled with finance and then they're going, oh, yes, but the lenders should still consider this. Oh, really? <laughs> we're just laughing like as brokers. We're going, yeah, well, I know who I wouldn't be taking those files to and I know who I would because you just have to understand which lender has an appetite for what sort of credit you're presenting. So you need to be very, very wary in this day and age. Don't just go thinking, oh, I'm a clean vanilla client. Vanilla. We all want vanilla ice cream, but it just doesn't happen. I had a, for example, I had a perfectly fabulously well-paid client. He was just a slightly into lenders mortgage insurance territory, um, but not too, but too much at all. Had a reasonable, good deposit, great income very central Melbourne property, but it turned out that the mortgage insurer didn't like the property because the valuer had written something about the property. So they refused to lend. So I had to find someone else. It was like, hell's bells, who wouldn't want this chap? You know, but it wasn't him. And then it turned out it was the property. So you have to be very aware of what you're presenting where. And the other thing to watch for is like on your credit cards. If people are using lots of credit cards that I couldn't tell you, how careful you've got to be, just get rid of them as quickly as you can. But say you've got a credit card and you've got a $12,000 limit and that statement that you're presenting has, you know, 11700 owing, well, that could be an automatically declined. Even though you've always paid it and you've paid it on time, it could be just too close to the limit for the lender to actually allow that through. So be very wary about where you put what is the best advice. Okay, so We've been talking mainly uh, to this point about um, just the, the the heavy scrutiny that um, loan applications are coming under. So that's a difficulty that um, ordinary consumers have to deal with. Um, but there's also the issue of the, the number of lenders that are out there, the number of products that are out there, and mm. the reality that the average consumer has no hope of getting their mind around all of them. I mean, I've sat with you in your office in Melbourne watching the daily bulletins come with the latest changes, the latest offers, the latest deals. I mean, it's changing on a daily basis, isn't it? Oh, it's changing hourly. And some lenders will present one fabulous offer, you know, and a great interest rate, and then you'll get some loans in there and then they'll change it and <laughs> remove it and put it because they got too much business. So that's another thing. You've got to move quickly if you see something that will appeal to people. 
So it's true, but the, the updates are relentless. We have a team who work in the background just helping me with that. So I can send in a query and they go, oh, Louise, this will, these lenders are up to date. So you can do, you can present here, here and here. But I have a whole team working on that. So, and that's, we're across it all the time, but you'd need to be, because it's, if you start looking for yourself, you could go mad. <laughs> Yeah, but um, the statistics show that despite everything um, that we know about them, that most consumers are still with the big four banks. So the vast majority still have their loans with the big four banks when I think the reality is you can get better deals if you go to some of the alternative lenders. Is that the case? That yeah, well, find? it's interesting. Recently, I was uh, refinancing a client's loan to um, a second tier lender, the la one of the largest uh, non-bank lenders in Australia because uh, they have a killer rate for investors. Killer rate, whether it's principal and interest, and they'll do five years interest only. One client I refinanced their whole lot there. I saved them 20000 a year in repayments. But, but this client then got a call from her um, major bank who not only said, oh, they'd try and match the rate, which they couldn't, and then they said, oh, we'll give you $2,000 if you stay. Get that. She was like, no, nah, still, still, it's still not worth it because I said well you know if you don't want to go for two grand I think it's probably you know I'm not going to fuss and she goes oh bugger them no we're not putting up with that you know <laughs> they wouldn't offer it to me when I was sitting there but now they do when you send in a discharge form so they like it they note when uh, brokers are working for clients I can tell you it helps people they do get better offers mm. yeah so why is it do you think that uh, most people, despite everything, have still got their loans with the major banks? Have people just got some sort of um, irrational loyalty to the big banks they've been with? No, them? it's just so overwhelming. I know. They just hate looking at finance and getting all that paperwork together. And it seems such a huge job. And it's sort of like it pushes them to the limit. And then they contact me and they go, quick, do it now. I can't stand it any longer. <laughs> and that happens a lot. People go, I've just been, you know, prefer um, taking my time forever on this. And now I just want it done because uh, they just find the um, effort of getting us documents. But we have a really streamlined system. So we use file invite and bank statement so we can get it all as automatically as we can. To, and once they get going, they go, oh, that was much easier than I thought it would be. But I think the thought of looking sometimes at your finances puts people off. But don't be put off because it's so worthwhile. You can save yourself thousands and thousands of dollars. And we love doing that every day for people. So it's amazing the difference it can make on people every month, what you can save if you go to the trouble of doing this properly, you know. Okay. And it's worth doing it every year. That's you know, we try and do a review for everyone every year just to make sure you're still in the ballpark and getting what you need. I just want to remind people who are watching that if you've got any questions for Louise, and I hope you do, um, key them in now because Louise is going to be with us for perhaps another seven or eight minutes and then we'll be moving on to another of our guests. So if you have a question, now's the time to type it in and you may even get an answer instantly to it. Um, Terry, just on that point, while we're talking, on the uh, second tier lenders, I'll just say some of the majors, you can tell how much fat is in the system when the major banks are offering $2,000 for a refinance or some of them are offering $2,000 if you purchase a new property with them or even $4,000. Some are offering $2,000 per property you refinance to them with a loan over $250,000. Others are offering 300,000 Qantas points. It depends on the... Um, m m mood of the uh, lender at the day, but none of these offers seem to be going away and they are with all the major banks, but they are not with the second tier lenders. Generally, minor lenders just give a clean service offering and good interest rate, clean, good service and no frills and preferably no fees as well ongoing. So it's worth doing a full comparison on that for people. Don't say, oh, look, you know, they're offering me this and that rate and it's worth actually checking and what is the difference in your repayments and over the long term, how much difference will it make, you know, instead of having to pay a fee every year and ongoing fees. So, you know, it, it changes people's perspective if they actually really do the work. But that's the benefit of having a broker because we'll do it for you. Anyway. Because of um, so many people have this reluctance to, um, to refinance for whatever reason, um, there's probably a lot of people out there who've got interest rates that are higher than they need to be. Mm. Should your interest rate begin with what number should it begin with if you've got say like a housing uh, like a home loan 
at the moment. What, if it's an owner occupied home loan, you can definitely get under three percent depending on your circumstances. But um, and and the the banks and particularly the major banks are trying to get you to fix those rates. Now the implication is the rates are going down. We still think they might, you know, see some further downward pressure, but for how much? But the banks aren't passing on. So people go, oh, you know, great, reserve, great, like it's great that interest rates are going because actually it means things aren't going that great, but anyway. So people go, oh, well, it should mean this much in my interest rate, but it doesn't. The banks have told us categorically, if you got a 2.25 uh, reduction from the Reserve Bank, they're unlikely to pass on more than a 0.13 if that so be very wary if you offered a really good rate at the moment maybe it's worth having a consideration for a fixed rate and and getting some surety particularly with investment loans you want to look at well what's the best rate i can get and keep it there for as long as i can because then i know what i'm going to be paying you know and hopefully the rent's covering it and then you're good for a long long period so it gives you some surety about it because you don't want that uh, sleep at night factor to be disturbed by having an investment. You want to be absolutely sure you're going to be able to cover the debt. Well, there's a, one of our viewers, Chris, has asked the question, um, what about, he says SMF, I assume you mean self-managed super fund lenders. I know, I know that they're out there, none of, them, none of the major banks are doing it anymore, but there are lenders who are, I think. Yeah, there's a couple of lenders, uh, yes, and but the re there's a really good reason why they're not is because they don't think it's a very good investment for SMSFs. Um, there's lots of reasons for that. And they also charge you a premium in the interest rate. So you'd really want to consider, is that the best option for you and your super fund? Or is it just your excuse trying to buy another property? And maybe you should be considering buying it in your own names rather than an SMSF. But, you know, there, there's opportunities there, but you want to be pretty careful. They also want you to have a very large cash component remaining in your super fund to pay for any shortfalls that come up. Okay. A question from Sahara who says that um, they love your enthusiasm, Louise, but also <laughs> want to know what's, Thank the current, you. <laughs> what's the current industry sentiment towards leaning to investors who are self-employed with financial docs um, or just, um, yeah, two years with the financial docs. Um, yeah, look, some lenders are still using the latest year um, or even, you know, one year. They'll have a look at two, but they will rest on one year. It depends on your financials. I, I, I had no problem getting, um, well, Terry, you should know, self-employed <laughs> or trusts or whatever, we get them through no problem, don't we? <laughs> well, and, eventually, and that, eventually. Yeah, well, you, you, the, the, once, the, once they know you and your business, they are pretty pretty keen to, to keep going but uh, there's no problem getting self-employed and don't get put off by it it's sometimes some people can't read financials <laughs> and particularly in banks remember they're PAYG they're, they're, they're in banks because they're not entrepreneurial they're not like a broker <laughs> and brokers at least in small business and doing it and doing financials themselves so they should be able to read and understand yours and right. they can help interpret it and send it to the bank so Please feel yeah. free. <laughs> it shouldn't be that hard for you. We've just got a couple of minutes left. Louise Manel is ask, asking the question, are there banks that still offer no deposit loans for doctors for investment purposes? It's not no deposit. They'll lend 90% with no lender's mortgage insurance. Is that what you're asking, I'd say? There's quite a few. The accountants even, um, dentists. It all depends on lots of professions. Uh, lenders will actually give you up to 90% with no lenders mortgage insurance. So that can be an advantage for people. But there's no no deposit loans at all. The rest of it, actually the equity they will be taking is from your own home. And a lot of people don't realise that that's what's happened until it's too late. And then, and I'll go, oh, you realise that's crossed with your home? They go, oh, no, 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 that loan's just against that property. Oh, it won't be. And you've got to check. So make sure you're very careful on what security you're giving the banks for a loan. Don't, don't get uh, put off by that because they'll ask for everything if they can, particularly if you're self-employed. Okay. Look, I'm just um, sharing my screen um, and I hope you can see. Can you see that, Louise, yourself? 
Like you oh work, yes, there you go. Looking, looking magnificent. I'll just put that up yeah. on the screen so that people can see how to contact you. Your time segment is up. Oh, I've just got one thing, Terry, to say. We're having a workshop early next year called Your Best Year Yet. I've put it in the chat box for anyone who can have a look at. And one of the things we find the biggest problem that people have is getting a plan organised for your year. And it's not just for property, but it's for your finances and for your life. So we're running this workshop. And if anyone's interested and thinks, oh, yes, I want to get on board for that and maybe um, work with us few in future go to the website and sign up and we'll keep you posted on for information okay, okay. Louise, well, i know we could talk about this topic for oh couldn't we oh. Talk about it all night but um yeah. unfortunately the time segment is up anyone would like to follow up with louise and i urge you to do so because i think anybody out there who wants to get into the property market and get a loan you need to have on your team a really good mortgage broker and I highly recommend Louise Lucas to you. The property Thank education company, there are a contact details. So if you're interested and those of you who have questions we haven't had time to get there, please follow up and contact Louise. Thank Thanks you for your time, Louise. It's been Thanks. wonderful. Have a great night all. See you. Bye.